chat or raise your hand and then we will help you further. And it's really nice uh, meeting you, uh, although it's online, but um, we are very happy that you're participating in this uh, meeting. So thank you for that. Okay, we'll share the uh, PowerPoint then. So these are the topics and the schedule for uh, for this hour. And as you can see, uh, the uh, first topic is visa, uh, which I will explain you a bit more. Uh, and then if you've got any questions about this topic, then just uh, ask through chat or raise your hand as it's going to explain. Uh, for those non-EU non -EU, uh, students who have admission to an on-site program, um, please know that we can apply for your visa if you come from these uh, countries. Uh, as we have been informed that your embassy is open to, uh, to collect visas. Um, make sure that you have uh, paid your uh, package fee, which includes your housing and insurance and visa before the 15th of July, if you haven't done it yet so, and submit the acknowledgement of debt for the tuition fee before the 1st of September. Make sure also that you uh, upload the required documents for the uh, immigration, for the visa, um, before the 15th of July. You can upload these in the SIS portal and also to prove your financial means. Sometimes the financial means is part of law. A package fee already, so then you already have paid this probably, um, and otherwise you can show this with the bank statement. Um, let me see here. Part of the um, visa documents is the antecedent certificate. You can find all the documents as well on our website. This is the uh, link. I only missed here one stripe between practical and methods, but uh, there you have the link. Uh, one of the forms is the antecedent certificate, which is quite a simple form to fill out. Um, sometimes students are asking if you need to fill a VIN number. <laughs> I just see now there's a question about that. You cannot fill out the VIN number yet because after the application has been done with the immigration services, then the VIN number will be available. So you can leave that card out on the antecedent certificate. Just make sure you fill out correctly your date of birth and everything on the form. The immigration application form is also uh, important to fill out correctly with your passport details, but also about which embassy uh, you don't want to collect your residence, uh, your visa. Um, financial, uh, a copy of your passport uh, and also all the pages of your passport that include stamps and stickers. If you have one, uh, if you've got any stamps and stickers, Please make a cut as well and upload these in the SIS portal. Proof of financial means, if you still have to um, complete this, then make sure that you read carefully the requirements of the bank statement, which you can find uh, as well um, if you check on our website. Okay, now I'm going to check the chat because I see a lot of questions are coming here and my colleagues are already answering. Uh, can you sign the forms digitally? Um, now the forms have to be signed with a pen, with, uh, and then you can upload these in, in the system. It's nice that everything else, uh, else is clear. You can use it digitally, but it's, you need, need a it's called a wet signature for that on the forms, please. Um, let me see. If I see any other questions, and if you've got questions, you raise your hand, that's fine as well. Right, there is I see a question from Chen. Um, Hi, how are you? Hi. <laughs> uh, so, I'm a student from a non-European uh, country and uh, I wonder if it's possible for me to pay the uh, first year tuition fee by uh, three installments. That's possible, yeah. Um, you have received probably also the acknowledgement of debt 
that you can just fill out and then send it uh, to finance. Uh, yes, and also it says on the uh, acknowledgement of that that uh, the first installment should be paid before the 1st of September. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that I saw from your slides that uh, the deadline for the first installment is not 1st of September. So can you confirm mm -hmm. this uh, deadline? Uh, well, let me check because I wrote it down here to be sure. Um, if you're going to apply for your visa, then it's important to also uh, make sure you fill out the, uh, the uh, acknowledgement of that before the 15th of July and take care of the payments before the, all other documents before the 15th of July. Is that what you mean? Uh, no, I just I just want to make sure that um, what is the deadline of the first installment? The first installment, the, the yes. payments before the 1st of September. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bara Bashir, I see here. Let me see if I can. Hello, um, I'm an international student as well. And I was wondering, do we still like need to apply for the entire visa process, even though the first semester is going to be online? Well, if your study is online, then we will not apply for your visa for now. So, um, um, what study are you going to attend? Uh, international Finance and Accounting. The International Finance and Accounting. The, um, uh, let me see. Just checking my colleagues. Is that one also? It's also online first, right? It starts online. So, um, Based on that, we will not apply for your visa once your, uh, if your uh, program will continue in February uh, on site, then we will inform you in October about the new, like uh, the visa regulations by then, and the payment for the rest of the package fee for that. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Can you repeat that? Yeah, if your program starts online, uh, in September, then we're not going to apply mm -hmm. for a visa at this moment. Um, then you then you attend your course online from your home country. Once it's possible so to. So do I pay the full package? No, then you're only or taking just care of yeah, the tuition fee. Yeah, then you're only taking care of the pay, the payment of the tuition fee for now. So make sure that the debt uh, debt is, is filled out and then then. Uh, been submitted before the 1st of September. Um, and then in October, we will inform students if, in case that your program will continue in February on site, and it's possible still, depending also on the situation with COVID. Um, then we will take care of your visa for them in February. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm not quite sure if I can do that. Oh, what are you doing? Ava, did you still have a question? There are some visa questions, Benka. Maybe you can. Yeah, let me see. Uh, because I, then I. Ask it as well. In the chat, you mean because I see a raised hand as well for Milan. Um, okay, yeah. Let me see. Hello. If, oh, would I speak to now? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, sorry. Um, I have a question. With my study visa transaction, and I know before the 15th of August, I have to pay some eight, uh, seven thousand eight hundred for the tuition fee. 
However, I applied for the changing purpose of my resident permit. So I will be having the, once I receive that resident permit, I will be having the same right as the, the normal European student as well. But I'm not sure whether I will be receiving that new permit before September or after September. If I receive that after September, will I receive a reduction from the two issue or is still just going to be the regular 7,800? Well, at that moment that you have your new uh, status, uh, yeah. you have like a, I think it's a, a resident permit then, I guess, or? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, as soon as you got that one, you can show that by uh, submitting a copy of that one. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, based on a, a family reunion or a certain person, then you also need to add a copy of that passport or resident permit as well. But then the student okay. registration will, uh, will change your status as well uh, based on the date mm -hmm. of your residence permit. So till then. So it's while well, I. Yeah. 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 You then what? Sorry, I didn't hear the last part. So as long as you as you do not have the residence permit, you still are considered mm -hmm. as a non-European probably. And then once you have your residence permit based on a different purpose, then okay. the registration can um, can uh, uh, can have a look and see if that will change your status as well as a, as a European student, considering as a European student. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm just checking Sorry. how... Oh. oh, yeah, thank you so much. That's... Okay, you're welcome. Um, oh, there are a lot of questions I can see now. Is there uh, another way that can help me which question I should answer, perhaps? Because I see it also a lot of replies from you guys. So. Maybe you can um, uh, answer the question from Miriam Mayan Maslumi from Iran. Miriam. It's the last question in the chat this ah, morning. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, well, as you're from Iran, uh, Miriam, uh, that means that unfortunately, uh, I'm not quite sure what your program would be, but if it would be a uh, an on-site program that means that we will not apply for your visa. Uh, in that case, uh, it's only possible to cancel for now and apply for new intake. <coughs> and hopefully by then the also the corona visa will, uh, yeah, depending on what the situation is at that moment, we can apply for your visa by then. Um, but for now, for September, if it's an on-site program that you have admission to, uh, we will not apply for your visa. Uh, that means that you can cancel. Uh, yeah, and if, if you already paid your fees, then we can take care of the refund for that. Um, if you're doing an online program, then uh, we will also not apply for your visa, but then you can continue your study online. I hope this answers your question. There's uh, many Umar. Is that Umar? Yes, it's me, Umar. Okay. Yeah, actually, like I have some question regarding admission requirements and everything. Mm -hmm. Like I already got admission, and I have sent an email to the institution like two weeks before, mm -hmm. and they're not responding me. I don't know why. Well, yeah, it could be that we're receiving so many emails. That's also one of the reasons why we have this uh, session. Okay. Uh, and also because. Uh, Situation is changing a lot, so we're also waiting for the last outcome. 
What is yeah. your uh, what is your nationality and for which program do you have admission to? Uh, like the thing is, I'm already here in Netherlands. Oh, okay. I have been studying in Wittenberg University for last two years. Sorry, last and part. Then, like I have been studying here in Netherlands for last two years. Yeah. And now I'm planning to start from first September with section. Yeah. And my course is international business. So it's uh, so, online. Yeah, it's online. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the university asked me to show the proof of financial means. Mm -hmm. So, like, as I'm already here, so that's my request. Like, do I still need to show the proof of financial means because, like, I'm here from last two years? Right, because then you probably have a resume card based on study already, which is still yeah. bad, actually. And yeah, like, I, I still ID. have my permit and everything. Yeah, you have a reference plan based on study still. Yes. Yeah, so if it's still better, we can just send a notification to the uh, IND that you will be studying here. You can still okay. use your same, your same yeah. uh, reference permit. Uh, yeah. And that's why you are asked to also show your financial means, as we do need to be sure that you can support yourself financially. No, like, my question is, do I still have to show the proof of financial means? Yeah. Uh, okay, and what about the housing and insurance? Well, housing is already live in Netherlands. Uh, yeah, because like I already have insurance and I yeah, already so have registered with Gemente. Yeah, so that's not, not required. And we also normally don't do not arrange the housing for someone who's already living in the Netherlands. So, okay, for you, in your case, it will only be the, the tuition fee and, yeah. uh, uh, and make sure that you prove your financial means on time. So, okay. Uh, I would say before the 15th of July then, so we can send a notification to the IND if we yeah. can take over your presence plan. Okay, so like till 15th of July, I have to show the proof of financial means. Yeah. And what about the fees, tuition fees? Tuition fees the same as for you. You can, um, um, as you already for, live in For the spend. tuition fees, like I signed an acknowledgement sent by the institution. So yeah, you can like also, I will be paying in installments. Yeah, you can also uh, arrange your payments through study link. Okay. So you can pay in installments, that's fine. Okay, so like once I show the proof of financial means, then you will ask the ID that I'm already registered with the university? If you if you show your proof of financial means, we can notify it to the IND, yeah. Okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah? yes, okay. thank you so much for a good help. Yeah, Bye. Yes. have a nice day. See you. Bye. see you. Um, let me see, there are still two, uh, uh oh, there are more coming. Um, we're also checking what the new topics are as well. So, what shall we do? Shall we continue or shall we first go to different topics and then finish at the end with any questions? I'm asking my colleagues now. Maybe it's a good idea to answer the last question from Kate, number two. She's from Vietnam and she's a little bit confused about visa. If she must pay the total package fee before the 15th of July or uh, how is it going to be? But the program to study online is until February. How about to pay housing as well? It's, uh, it's in the chat. It's in the chat, okay. Number two. So, okay, in your question you're having about what you need to pay before the 15th of July, um, as your study will start online, that means that we will not apply for your visa for now uh, because you can attend your course online first. Um, in October, we will inform students for whom the study will continue on-site from February, depending again on what the situation will be in the, in the, uh, in the world concerning COVID. Um, but in October, then we will inform you uh, with a new invoice and also about the new visa forms uh, that you can uh, pay your housing fee from February. So for now, it's just taking care of the payment of your tuition fee. Um, and in 
So over you will get information about how to pay for the housing uh, and insurance and for the visa uh, in case that your program will start uh, on site in February. I hope that answers your question, Kate. All right, um, I will move on to the next topic. Um, we also do have some uh, raised hands, we see. Um, I will just first go to the next topic and then we'll discuss the uh, raising hands um, and I will try to answer those questions. Um, so first of all, um, the payments, uh, I would like to give you some more uh, information about this. Um, you all received an email on the 23rd of June with uh, detailed information about the payment of the tuition fee because the payment of the tuition fee is, is made possible for you to pay if you're a non-European uh, student to pay in three installments. Um, also, if you have been awarded a scholarship, uh, this, is, is, this information is also in this, in this email. So I would like to advise you to read this carefully on what you need to do. Um, to make sure uh, if you want to make use of uh, the uh, installments, the three installments. So what um, the other thing that's important is about the new students outside of the European Union starting the online program. Um, we will not apply for your uh, visa, so it means that we only need the tuition fee. Um, you can pay it at once, but you can also pay it in these three installments. If you want to make use of the installments, do it um, as follows. You have to make sure the first installment is arranged before the 1st of September, so by 31 August. And you also need to make sure you have um, handed in, submitted the acknowledgement of debt form to our finance department. If you are a new student uh, outside of the European Union starting the on-site program, um, as mentioned before, then the package fee, excluding the tuition fee, must have been arranged by the 15th of July in order for us to start the visa, visa application on time. So this means you need to make sure that this amount is transferred before the 15th of July. It contains the housing, housing fee, um, the insurance, and the MVV residence permit fees, so excluding the tuition fees. So this is just a short notice of, okay, what was uh, in the email, but also what is currently applicable for the uh, new students outside of the European Union, because here are the most, yeah, things changed. Um, I will now just try to uh, give Sebastian the, presenter role and you can ask your question. Sebastian, can you hear me? You can ask your question at this moment. Unfortunately, I cannot hear you, Sebastian. Maybe you should check your microphone. You've been giving the opportunity to... Hello. Oh, Can yeah, you... there you are. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, do you need the video also? No, oh. video is up to you. Okay, so I was just... Um, so I had a question about the payments. So I'm from France, so European. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I've entered the details through StudioLink. Yeah. And I choose the installments. I just mm -hmm. wanted to know if there is something to to do on my side with the bank, or is it automatic? Um, yeah, if you fill all the details in Study Link, yes, uh, then it will be arranged uh, by our finance department. So you don't need to do any extra um, extra steps. I would like to advise you to uh, take a close look on uh, the following web page that I will send in the chat. Um, okay. Here is just mentioned in detail about what is um, what is uh, what is necessary for for you to do as a student. But do keep in mind that you only need to fill in the information in StudyLink. Okay, that's perfect. 
Um, and you said it's in three, three installments. No, for you as a European uh, student, and you can uh, have more than one, uh, sorry, more than three installments. We make use, it's also on the link that I've sent in the chat. We make yes. use of, um, I must check it, I think 10 installments, okay. uh, but it's more in detail in the, on the link. I, th I would like to advise you to check this and uh, you, could, you can find the detailed information over there. Okay, so uh, when we will be advised about uh, this, this uh, payments uh, in August or? Uh, yeah, yeah it's as soon as possible, I, I uh, can say. I, uh, yes. If it's possible in July, otherwise in August, uh, but our finance department will inform you about this. Okay, great. And so for Europeans, we don't need a visa, right? Just want to confirm with you. Yeah. Yep. So Sorry. except paying and the package fee and uh, um, all the mandatory documents, uh, I don't have anything else to do. No, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. And just one last question about the. Um, I, I was. Uh, I wanted to ask you if I could have a letter of acceptation. Acceptance. Sorry, because I only received the conditional one and uh, for the TOEFL, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. If I could receive something, uh, you know. Without condition. Yeah, I, I think you. The best thing to do so is to email us at international office at saxion.nl um, yep. to make the request for an admission uh, without uh, under condition. Okay. Yeah, I already did, but uh, yeah. Okay, I will send a yeah. mail. You get if you it. You don't need to send it again. We will uh, make sure you will receive it as soon as possible. But due to the big amount of questions and the uh, current situation. Yes could take a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. Okay. Thank All you right. very much. You're welcome. Uh, okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Shall I otherwise continue with the next topic, uh, Sven? But most of the questions now at this moment are not about yeah about payments of housing in the okay well, I just gave uh, Clio Afki Constantin ah, okay. yeah, please, the, yeah excuse me for my pronunciation but uh, I give <laughs> him or her the rights <laughs> to ask the question via audio oh yeah. I believe uh, the person has left. So yeah, we can continue. Okay, uh, I was just answering a question of uh, Tran. Tran, um, let me see, who's joining the MBA course and also asking about the uh, package fee. Um, as you're doing an MBA program, uh, ah, you might already be answering. Uh, it's an online program, and therefore we do not have any invoice for housing and insurance uh, for now. Um, as you will stay from your home country to attend the course for now, and once in the future it might be in a, an on-site program, then things will change. But for now it's just the tuition fee, and that's why you did not receive an invoice with the housing and insurance. Okay, shall I continue? Yeah, let's do so. Um, I'll continue with, um, uh, with the next topic, which is insurance, and I also got questions about that already in the, in the chat as well, is that um, in the Netherlands you need to be insured for health and liability at all times. Um, that means in, for the European students, we expect that you have a European health card from your home country, that you already insured for this um, via your home country. Um, make sure that you check with your insurance provider for which things you are covered and um, for which period as well and how the claim procedure works in case that you do need to have some medical uh, treatment uh, or you need to go to a family doctor and make sure you check what is covered and uh, how it works because we do get sometimes students who are European students at our front desk who are surprised sometimes about the cost they have made and that they think it's 
covered or they don't know what, what to do with it. Um, because sometimes most of the insurance companies, they you are insured for the urgent methods. But if you go to a family doctor, which is a standard procedure here in the Netherlands, that if you are ill or you have medical questions, you go first to a family doctor. That this consult is not covered by your own insurance provider. Um, that means that you pay about 28 euro first for a consult in cash. Um, but anything that comes out of that, you need to see a specialist or anything like that. Check with your insurance provider if this is covered. Um, for non-European students, we take care of your health and liability insurance for the first academic year. You stay here. If you do an on-site program and you will study here, then we take care of your, your health and liability insurance. Um, also, that means that you probably have to pay in cash first for any uh, consult to the family doctor, but that's something you can get a refund of uh, through the AUN insurance by uh, submitting your receipts online. Um, for all of you, European or non-European, if you uh, are looking for a part-time job and having a part-time job in the Netherlands, then your insurance from your home country or from AON um, that we have arranged for you is not sufficient in time that you have a part-time job. Then you have to switch to a so-called basis organization, a basic health insurance. Um, uh, important to know at the time that you find a part-time job. So if you got any questions about that later on, perhaps with uh, Mihai when he's talking about the study life, um, we can discuss that. Or if you come to the Netherlands, we can discuss that. Um, the details about what kind of insurance you need in time of a part-time job. Are there any questions for now for the insurance? Let me see. Let me see, I see Bara Bashir who has his hand raised. Let me see if I can help him. Um, hi again, my question is still about the payment thing, but you didn't. Um, you went over it, so I just want to ask no. again. For students from, there, there was a certain list of like students from certain countries like um, African countries, precisely Sudan. For the proof of financial means, we need to submit either a bank statement, but the most common thing was that we have to pay a certain fee, which is I think 5,000 euros, mm -hmm. right? So which which one is better to go for? You mean if you should prove your financial means by sending a bank statement or by transferring as a temporary deposit to Saxion? Yes. Um, well, we strongly prefer that you transfer the, the financial means as a temporary deposit to Saxion because it's most quick and the most easy is also at the moment that you're here that we can um, refund you the uh, money as soon as you got the Dutch bank account. Uh, a mm -hmm. bank statement is also possible, however, um, sometimes the bank statement uh, lacks the information that is required uh, and then you have yeah. to get a new one and that sometimes takes a long time to get everything clear on the bank statement. Um, so if you so ask me, I have to it to <laughs> Sorry? Okay. Is it clear? That is a safer one. It also, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes mm -hmm. students they, they submit a bank statement, which is which is fine, but it means that you also need to be uh, that you also have access to that money as well at the time that you're here. And sometimes the students are not quite sure if they when stay here mm -hmm. they can also have uh, access to that money. So it's something that they have to consider but they um, how they handle it so yeah personal bank statement or from a sponsor that's fine um, uh, or you can send it as a temporary deposit to suction okay 
Thank you again. Okay, you're welcome. Well, I see a hand raised by. Oh, oh the one left, just left. Is it? I see Barab still is in with a hand. Let me see. Is there anything in the chat? No questions about the insurance. No. Um, I just gave. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't say <laughs> Who's understanding? Who's asking? I forgot to take it. Oh, but I'm sorry. You, you forgot to turn off my. Oh, you did it on the microphone, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I also see uh, someone else, uh, Clio, if I'm correct. Okay, no hands here. Maybe we, uh, maybe we can continue with the next topic and then uh, in, in the meantime answering questions. Uh, in the chat. Is that okay? Yes, let's do that. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. I will start the next topic. It's about housing. I will uh, just first explain and then we can uh, continue answering questions uh, via video slash audio call. Um, all right, about housing. Uh, I just made a quick overview for uh, for you guys. Um, if you come from outside of the European Union, starting the online program per September, um, then there will be no housing available as we will encourage all of you to uh, start studying online from your home country. So we will also not apply for your visa at this moment. Um, if eventually it will be possible again to follow the course, the program uh, on site, we will inform you and then, uh, yeah, also about all the steps that are then necessary to take. So for now, no housing will be available. If you come from outside of the European Union, starting the on site program per September 2020, then it's very important to do the following um, you will need to pay the package fee in time, including the housing and housing fee, and you have to be allowed to travel to the Netherlands, then we will make sure there is a room for you reserved. So meaning the pack package fee, excluding the tuition fee, because you may pay the tuition fee in installments. It is not necessary to pay it as well before the deadline. So the package fee in time and we can make sure you are able to travel to the Netherlands and we have your visa application started and we make sure there's a room available for you. If you come from the European Union and you're starting the on-site program September in 2020, your reservation request will be honored if you made a reservation request. And the last one is if you are an European Union student starting the online program in September 2020, you are still welcome if you made a reservation request. You will also then receive a confirmation email um, as soon as possible. But we can also understand, understand, of course, if you would like to cancel your reservation, for example, due to not willing to go to travel to the Netherlands or if you're not able to travel to the Netherlands, um, if you want to cancel this reservation, please then also go to our frequently asked questions page. And you will find here uh, more information and also the steps about how to receive the, the full refund of your housing fee. And please also do notify, uh, notify us about your cancellation via email. So we know um, that you are not coming and we know which um, uh, other students, for example, uh, would like to, to come as well, or we know the capacity that we can use in our housing. 
All right, that's uh, an overview. If you do have questions uh, that you would like to ask via audio, please do raise your hand at this moment. I will give you permission to ask the question. All right, Umar, I will make you a presenter and you can ask your question. Hello, can you hear me, please? Yes, hello. Uh, hi, good evening. Yeah, actually, I just had a session with you online, but I also have one question. Mm -hmm. Like, I have been here in Netherlands for the last two years. Uh, yes. I was studying in Wittenberg University. Mm -hmm. And like the admission letter I have, like it's under question. It shows like I have to show the IELTS test. Mm -hmm. But as like I'm already an international student studying mm -hmm. in English, so do I still have to show the IELTS? Uh, well, there is if you can, you need to prove your uh, English proficiency. And we can check it with the uh, with the yields with the IELTS uh, score. Okay. Um, the other option is that you do have, but I don't know your previous education. But if you do have followed a bachelor before, yeah. in English, then okay. you can also give us the um, a written statement from the yeah. university that okay. you have done the bachelor in uh, in English and that it was fully taught in English. And if you have no, a like, written that, like I right. don't have any degree from them, like I just left it in between. Mm -hmm. So like I was only studying with them for two years and then I just left it. To, like I want to join section mm -hmm. because it's more practical. And... Yeah, well this is um, that I cannot, uh, you can try. I cannot give you the exact answer because our student registration departments checks all these documents. So you could try to uh, get this document for the two years that you followed your bachelor in English uh, okay. from the uh, from the previous uh, education that you followed, and you yeah. could uh, just submit that and write to student registration. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and they will try to verify this. Okay. And if it's, I cannot guarantee that it will uh, be a replacement of the IELTS. Okay. Uh, this is only uh, being checked by them. They have the yeah. Like regulation. the thing is, like the thing is, there are no currently dates available in Netherlands for IELTS. Mm -hmm, that's correct. Um, what is available? Uh, did you heard of the internet-based uh, TOEFL? Yeah, yeah, I heard about it. You can also um, you can also request one, so you can make one at home. Uh, okay. I can. Okay. Send the, uh, I will send the link in the uh, in the chat. Yeah. Uh, yes, I will see the chat. Uh, yeah, I can copy paste. Yeah. I just uh, put the, the link from uh, ETS. This is okay. the at home, and you could find out mm -hmm. if you can schedule uh, an internet-based uh, English proficiency test. Okay, I got it. But first, I will contact the student registration. Mm -hmm. I will tell all the story about my previous study, and maybe they will accept it. Uh, yeah, the best thing to do is first contact your previous education to ask for a written okay. document. And if they cannot provide you with a written document, uh, then yeah. we can, cannot accept it. We need the TOEFL or the IELTS. Like the written document is only like kind of recommendation letter in which like they say that the university is best on English courses and everything. Yeah, that you have been a student of the uh, university, that you have followed the okay. course fully English, and they will written, write it uh, with a signature, uh, and uh, okay. with a signature. and uh, with this, this document, uh, our student registration can check if it is okay or not. Okay, yeah, we'll do. All right. Yes, thank you so much. Bye. You're very welcome. Bye bye. Have a nice evening. Bye. All right.
Okay, I see uh, um, Clio also still has a raised hand. Are you able to chat or to use the audio? I think I have answered the questions already, but I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Then I will lower your hand now, Clio. And if you still have a question, just raise your hand again. Uh, Codrin, Christian has raised his hand. I will give you the permission to use the audio. Otherwise, there's still a question from uh, Jana. Uh, ah, you might just answered it. All right, okay, cool. <laughs> Godwin, can you hear me? I just gave you permission to ask your question through audio. <laughs> no, I cannot hear you, uh, Godwin. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, this is better. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, hello. So I had a question uh, about the housing yeah. and about what should I do about it since in Romania uh, the situation with the COVID uh, pandemic is getting worse again and uh, I have already paid for a room at uh, Sections Housing. Mm -hmm. I have the contract signed and all and uh, I would like to know if I can do something to prolong that contract till February or is it um, one period of time? Yeah, uh, well, normally it's for one full academic year. So, okay. uh, but it's more about, okay, which program are you going to follow? Uh, IHRM. HRM, okay. So this is also, this is, uh, yeah, okay, this is also an on, online program, so mm -hmm. you need to be, yeah, indeed on the campus. Um, what is possible is, um, I will just check now because uh, there just has been made uh, new decisions about this as well. Uh, let me see. Okay, well, there has not been a made a decision about this specific uh, question, only uh, about something else. Um, okay. What I would like to advise you is to uh, send uh, an email to international office at saxion.nl mm -hmm. uh, mentioning uh, if you are not going to come in September, um, but that you are willing to, or that you would like to postpone the reservation to February for once, uh, the, yeah, the situation is changed. Um, okay. Because then we can make a, a note about this, and I know that my colleague responsible for housing, that's our housing department, is currently working on uh, finding a solution for yeah these kind of uh, questions and situations. So, I understand. Uh, yeah, just please make sure you, you email us, and then uh, I can add you to the list of uh, uh, of students with the, within the same situation as you are at this moment. Yeah, sure. And uh, one more question: If there's nothing, if nothing can be done for this, mm -hmm. uh, should I just cancel the contract and uh, do one again next year? Apply for a room next year? Yeah. If you go to our frequently asked uh, questions page, mm -hmm. um, on in the bottom, I will send this as well in the chat. Um, here, there is a link and the steps uh, to take if you decide, okay, I do not want to travel or, or I don't, I cannot come, then uh, you can take these steps, so only you will receive the refund. I understand. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, let's move on to the next topic, I would say.
uh, I don't know. I think uh, me, I maybe I closed the uh, the PowerPoint presentation by mistake. No. But uh, uh, okay, uh, the the last uh, topic is about the life in the Netherlands, the student life in the Netherlands. So as I said before, I was a student for four years in Saxion, so I can answer your questions based on my experience. So if you have questions about the budget that you need while staying in the Netherlands or about transportation, accommodation, free time activities or even student jobs, now is the time to put your questions in the chat or to join us live. <coughs> so. So I'm what's waiting. the question about internships, Mihai? Not that you can answer specifically about the program, but maybe uh, there was a question about, <coughs> sorry, payment. Yeah, so I, I've seen the, the question of Mikhail, who was asking uh, if the internships are paid. And it, this, re this really depends on the company. Some companies do pay you. Some of them offer you accommodation if you are going in a foreign country. Some of them offer you accommodation and salary. It really depends on the company. So there is no yes or no answer for that. Uh, Sebastian, where is the base, best place to find a flat in Enskede? <clears throat> so... Uh, um, usually, there are a lot of um, Facebook groups where you can find the uh, rooms, student rooms. So every year there are students who are graduating or who are going on internship and they will uh, hand over their room to other students. So for example, if you just type on Facebook uh, student rooms in Enskede, you will find a lot of rooms. Uh, and it, uh, to be honest, it, to be honest, it is uh, quite difficult to find a, fla a flat, but the student room is quite accessible. Uh, are non-EU citizen students allowed to do in the internships in the Netherlands, whether paid or unpaid? Uh, you can you can do an internship in the Netherlands as well, even though you are non-EU citizen. Uh, Larissa, and how did you find your internship, Mihai? Did uh, the university help you or you searched alone? Um, like in, uh, so I, as I said, I had two internships. The first internship, uh, you need to um, to work with one of the with one of the Saxion's partners. So Saxion will help you with that. And for the second internship, you can either search alone or uh, get help from Saxion. So um, for the second internship, you are more flexible with that. What about uh, daily budget? Well, it depends if it's a weekday or a weekend, but um, yeah, if if uh, if you are um, using a bike, for example, you don't need to pay for the transportation. Then the food, uh, if you are cooking at home, that's uh, quite cheap. But of course, if you are going out and you go uh, going for drinks in the weekend, the budget can be quite high. Um, Simonas, how how is the public? Uh, in transport infrastructure, how much does it cost per month? Any discounts for students? Uh, Simona's, if you usually there are no discounts for students, uh, the transportation can be quite expensive. However, if you are working for uh, 50 for at least 56 hours uh, per month, then you can get uh, free transportation from the Dutch government, but only if you are working this amount of hours. Otherwise, usually you have to pay the full ticket price. Um, Martin Larson, hello, is the international physiotherapy program still on site and are you students free to choose housing on their own? Uh, yes, the physiotherapy program is on site. Uh, it's offered actually on site and online to give you a clear answer. And are the EU st students free to choose housing on their own? Yes, you can use, uh, you can find your own housing. 
uh, Mihail, is it easy to find a part-time job without speaking Dutch fluently? Um, to be honest, I was working all four during the four years while I was in the Netherlands. It, it is more difficult to find um, a job if you don't speak Dutch, but if you really want to work, there is always a place for you, even though you are not speaking Dutch. Uh, Bara, okay, are there any students' jobs on campus? Uh, yes, there are some uh, jobs on campus. For example, I used to work as a student ambassador for Saxion. Now I'm working for the international office. Some of my some of my colleagues also worked as a student assistant. So, for example, you can help your uh, your teachers or your teacher while um, like. Um, with uh, preparing the classes for uh, for uh, younger students, so yes, there are possibilities in the campus as well. You're welcome, Mihail. Uh, is the study year 2020-2021 will be online for non-EU students? Vlad, uh, this depends on uh, your study program. Some of the some of the programs are only offered online, while some of them are offered both online and on site. Larissa, how is the with the train as a way of transportation? I will live in Deventer, but HM University is in Apeldoorn, as you know. Do you know something about some prices for the train per month, Mihai? Um, uh, there is a possibility to get um, um, uh, how do you call that? Um, discount? Uh, not a discount, but to pay like for several months. For several months, how do you say that? Um, uh, semester card? Or? <laughs> yeah, you, you, is it possible to get a semester card? You can access this website, uh, Larissa. I will put it in the chat. Well, they're already trying to help you out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, Lucas. Oops, no, not this site, sorry. And as from then. Vlad, I have a C. MGT program and I, it will be online. May it be changed during first semester? No, uh, Vlad, the CMGT program will be online for sure for the first September for the first semester, so it won't change. It probably it will change during uh, the second semester, but we are not sure for now. Uh, Bara, what about the student activities and clubs? uh like uh, there are the, there are a lot of student activities within the campus like for example there are student unions that you can join so they organize parties or different workshops and also the um, university itself the international office is organizing trips around the netherlands and clubs yeah um there are um, I, I wouldn't call them clubs, but there are a lot of, let's call them pubs, where they are organizing parties around Enskede and Deventer. And yeah, Amsterdam is also close by. Um, what is the typical number of people living in student rooms? Can you guys maybe help me with that? I don't really remember. Uh, I think in the housing or dormitory from Saxion, it's uh, depending a bit which uh, who, uh, it's normally you share your kitchen and bathroom with approximate uh, four or five students. Yeah, exactly. So four or five, maybe let's say maximum six or seven, but the, usually around four persons. Yeah, depending if you do, if you arrange it yourself, yeah, it can, can be uh, can be different. Oh, I'm leaving. I can see it. Oh, I'm John left. I don't know.
uh, Luis how is it possible to request which housing to put to be put into or, or we put it in randomly um you usually you are put uh, randomly in the housing however uh, if you have uh, any preferences uh, you can let us know but uh, of course we cannot guarantee that you will get that housing Uh, Larissa, and the last questions from me, and I guess how how is Apple Donor Dev Enter? Thanks for the last time. Well, um, in I think uh, Apple Dorn it's a really nice town to study because it's really quiet and it's uh, a lot of green areas and parts. While in Dev Enter you have more uh, international students than in Apple Dorn. So I think in your case that you live in Daventer, but study in Appledorn is a very good combination. And uh, uh, one more question for Lucas. I don't know if it has already been answered, but are all the activities that uh, will not be held that is for the other years, introduction and so on? Uh, so Lucas, at the moment, uh, the introduction week is will be held online you will get more information about that and uh, Saxion is also trying to offer partly some active activities on site but this also depends on the um, corona situation and i will take one more question from mihail Hey, Mihai, any tips for finding a student room? Yeah, the, the best tip is to, to ask fellow students from senior years or and also to join the groups on Facebook where uh, people are posting their rooms. And yeah, be uh, try to not be scammed because there are also a lot of scammers. <laughs> And uh, Nikolai, to be honest, I, I'm not really sure uh, how long do the lectures take each day and how much free time will we have afterwards. Uh, this really depends um, on the study and which class you have. But usually it's around one and a half hours uh, each class. So you have, let's say, around two or three classes per, per day. And some some days it's, you are off, but it, it really depends on your program and the year. <clears throat> um, okay, I think uh, we can round it off. Yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Time's up uh, at this moment. Uh, we would like to thank you all for uh, being present here and to participate with us. Um, we do, uh, yeah, we do still have the opportunity, of course, if you uh, feel your answer or your question has been unanswered, to, to ask your question via the uh, international office at suction.nl email address. And you could also check our frequently asked questions uh, on our website. So, yeah, once again, thank you for, uh, for being present here today. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you as uh, an uh, or an on-site international student. Thank you, everyone. Hope to see you all soon. Goodbye so much. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Are you stopping the recording? <laughs> <laughs>